Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Rochester. For more than 150 years, ours has been a congregation of open minds and loving hearts, celebrating many sources of wisdom and many spiritual paths. Your faith, your doubts, your questions, your hopes for our world and your story are welcome here. And our doors are closed because our hearts are open, living our values of care for each other. You can stay connected in a variety of ways. If you're a newcomer, we invite you to check out some online videos to help you get to know our church and get connected. And we'll be having a newcomer class for membership coming up this May that you can join as well. If you have interest or questions about it, you can contact Melissa Egler on our staff or the church office to find out more. You can also sign up for tailgate coffee hours on Sunday mornings, as well as save the date for next week will be our annual May Day celebration, an annual rite of spring here. It'll be year two of pandemic May Day, unfortunately, but it'll still be festive. So there'll be a festive drive through under the Maypole ribbons in our upper lot from 1030 to 1130, where you can come get mini Maypoles and some chalk to bring color and art into your neighborhood, or you can chalk the sidewalks or the lot while you're here. You can sign up online for Bluebell hikes and Bluebell bike rides, a scavenger hunt for kids, a variety of things, both online, in-person, small groups, on your own, as we safely celebrate this annual tradition and rite of spring. So join us next Sunday. See more in your e-news or contact the office for more. And a reminder that May 9th through 16th will be a special week of conversation with stewardship for us our Unitarian Universalist consultants helping guide our next steps for our discernment about our building and grounds. There will be a special notice coming soon, opportunities for folks to connect with small groups. You can check out our website or contact the office for more or watch your e-news as well. We hope everyone will find a way to participate and it will culminate with a special congregational report online on Sunday, May 16th. So please save the date, join us, contact the office for more information. And a special thank you to the UU Ministry for the Earth. They've partnered with UU congregations across the country to help celebrate Earth Day. So we have special videos as part of our service today, musicians and speakers and reflections to help celebrate Earth Day and the theological and spiritual practices of both celebrating, enjoying, and working to protect the natural world. So thank you to UU Ministry for the Earth. And you can also join us this Wednesday for a special forum led by guest Allison Hoyer, increasing awareness and work about protecting our natural resources and work about the Line 3 pipeline here in Minnesota. So it'll be a chance to learn more about that, to sing some songs, an invitation to make soup in your homes. It'll be a unique forum. So find out more in your e-news and join us Wednesday night at 6.30. Finally, in the words of the Reverend Eliza Tupper Wilkes, minister of this church in the 1870s, may our faith in humanity and our message of hope and good cheer light our way. It's good to be together. This is the Unitarian Universalist Church. This is the Church of the Flaming Chalice. This is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the church of the loving heart, where friends come together and share. Now I'll do this. This old world may be sleeping, but we have been dreaming.
hand now Let's make a plan how to stay wide awake Let's fly you and me away Wake from your slumber and try to remember A time when we all were together as one A new day has come, tell me you Spring time has come. Mm -hmm. I'm wide awake now. Let us begin by offering. Greetings to the seven directions, acknowledging the world in which we live. We turn to the east. Where the sun rises. We turn to the south for its warmth and energy. We turn to the west. That is where wisdom lies. We turn to the north to honor our ancestors. We turn to the earth and bless her always. We reach the Father Sky for all the gifts that He gives us. And we pray for the spirit that is within each of us. acknowledge this land, which is Lenape land, the ancestors who are still with us and have always been. May their wisdom teach us that what we do impacts the seventh generation to come so that they may again grow strong and lead us to wisdom. And now we will light the chalice. Chalice is of course a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, which looks to embrace the eighth principle. principle that recognizes diversity, multiculturalism, and asks us to seek out ways to end white supremacy. We honor all of the elements of the earth, the water from the spring, the feathers from the bird of the air, indicating air flow, we have soil, we have fire. We need all of these to live. Aho.
draw inspiration from all sorts of things to help determine who they're going to become or who they're going to grow into. It can come from things we write or read or, or people around us or things we see or do in our own lives that really shape us. Today's story is about embracing the world around us and making sure that we're drawing inspiration from nature as well, and maybe not always in the way we think it might be coming. From Tree to Sea, words by Shelley Moore Thomas, art by Christopher Silas Neal. Earth shows me many things. Trees show me how to stand tall. Even when the wind tries to blow me down, I dance with the breeze. I do not fall. Stones show me how to be strong. If I am kicked around sometimes, like a rock in the road, I just roll along. Oceans show me how to travel far and wide. I see all there is to see, but I always return with a friendly wave. The sun shows me that brightness brings warmth to others. I smile and shine when things look dim. Clouds. Clouds show me how to rise up and float above problems. I am so light, I cannot be weighed down. Bees show me how to work hard and to help others. When work is shared, the rewards are as sweet as honey. A baby bird shows me how not to be afraid. How not to be afraid to spread my wings and fly. I'll never find out how high I can soar unless I try. Soil shows me how to support those around me. I care for tiny seeds until their roots are strong and their leaves reach for the sky. Good things can grow from me. Cats show me how to be curious. I playfully explore the world around me. I study, I ponder, I learn. Whales. Whales show me the wonder of big things and small things. I dream big dreams, yet I can only take small strokes, one at a time, to make them come true. The moon shows me that even when I change, I am still me. Sometimes it's round and pearly, sometimes it's only a sliver. But the moon is still the moon no matter what, and I am always me no matter what. What can the whale, the stars, the flower, or the moon show you? From dirt to cloud, from sun to moon, from tree to sea, there is a wide and wonderful world out there waiting. Just open your eyes. You'll find it. I hope this story inspires you to take a look around yourself. The flora and the fauna and everything that exists once you go outside your own front door. And maybe it will inspire you to become a little bit more like the nature that is all around us every day.
It is good to be with you. We are still physically separated, but are seeing a light in the future as we look forward to being together again. For now, we continue to gather in this virtual way as we create a place of communal caring and connection. Be enriched by the virtual presence of each other and draw yourself closer into the heart of love at this time of service and reflection. In this time together, we ask that our minds be open, our hearts welcoming, and our arms embracing. We honor all who support us in this caring, loving, and all-inclusive ministry. We send gratitude to Jesse Finch, serving as our caring coordinator for the last two weeks, arranging care for our members and friends in need. Diane Clausen and Joyce Wood will take over for the next two, and we thank them for that. The members of our caring committee are wonderful examples of our compassionate community, holding us up as we go through challenging and joyous times. And during this time of increasing needs in our lives, we encourage you to reach out for support and help if you are experiencing challenges. Many of us may need additional care, whether it be personal pastoral care, grocery delivery, or an errand run, and we encourage you to reach out to Reverend Luke or myself with that request. We thank all of you who have served our congregants in this way over the last few months. Today's flowers are shared by Gus and Trish Braga in celebration of their wedding anniversary. Gus says, We'd like to share that we're celebrating our anniversary this week. People ask how long we've been married, and we reply, 66 years. Trish is 30 years with her late husband, mine of 25 years with my late wife, and ours together now of 11 years. We celebrate all of the years of love in their lives and hope for many, many more. As we round the corner of uncertainty with the anticipation of some return to a new normal, please make the commitment to focus on continuing to reach out to those around you to let them know that we're still here and supporting them. Cards and phone calls and socially distanced visits can help lift up those you love and we encourage you all to support our community and local businesses as they safely reopen. May the faith in the spirit of life, love for the community of earth, and love for the light in each other be ours now and in all the days to come. Breathe deep the breath of life. Find your breath centered down wherever you are. Take a moment to pause in this swirling life, this swirling world. Know that in this house you are named and you are known as beloved, as sacred, as welcome. Feel below you the earth in its ancient turning. Feel above you the sky and the stars shining with their ancient light, holding you in this moment, this breath, this life, right here, right now. I invite you into this time of meditation and prayer first by sharing silence together. Spirit of life and source of love, God of a thousand names and beyond all naming, as we work to celebrate and to protect this earth on which we live, Help us to remember the beauty and the brokenness of our shared lives on this earth. This week, we especially hold the tenderness, the relief, the uncertainty, the work left to do of a verdict of a judge and a jury this week convicting an executioner. May the truth we always say be that Black Lives Matter and that justice is more important than order, that militarization of police, of anything, hurts us all, and that we all have work to do. Let us also pause, however, to leave space to celebrate the hard victory, space for the relief and the breath that comes after hard work and grief and months and years and generations. Some days the world seems to wake up just a little bit, still groggy, still bleary-souled, asking us to notice the glimmers of hope shining through this weary world. 
we need to keep waking up again and again. Let us keep working for the world where we can celebrate those glimmers of joy and a world where we can all breathe. Let us never forget how interconnected our work for justice is, for breath and life and flourishing for each other, for our planet, how interdependent we are, how those on the margins bear the brunt of not only societal injustice, but also climate catastrophe, how injustice naturally compound on each other and affect the vulnerable, the marginalized even more. May we love this earth enough and love each other enough that everyone and everything can breathe. We hold in our hearts all those who suffer. I invite you to bring the names you're holding this day in joy or in sorrow, celebration or concern, and silently are allowed now in this time to speak their names. For all those names and many others, may we be all held in love and in grace. These words are from indigenous poet Joy Harjo. Once the world was perfect, and we were happy in that world. Then we took it for granted. Discontent became a small rumble in the earthly mind. Then doubt pushed through with its spiked head. And once doubt ruptured the web for inspiration for life, each stone of jealousy, each stone of fear, of greed, of envy, of hatred, put out the light. No one was without a stone in his or her hand. There we were, right back where we had started. We were bumping into each other in the dark, and now we had no place to live since we didn't know how to live with each other. Then one of the stumbling ones took pity on another and shared a blanket. A spark of kindness made a light. And the light made an opening in the darkness, and everyone worked together to make a ladder, and a Wind Clan person climbed out first into the next world, and then the other clans, and the children of those clans, and their children all the way through time to now, into this morning light to you. May the morning light greet you and remind you of how we care for each other, how we care for the earth, how we care for ourselves, which may be all the same. Amen.
Today we have taken inspiration from Greta Thunberg, who was a young Swedish female autistic climate activist whose speech at the World Economic Forum in 2019 inspired the song by Emma's Revolution, Our House is on Fire. Here's an excerpt of Greta's speech. Our house is on fire. I'm here to say our house is on fire. We have to stop the emissions of greenhouse gases and either we do that or we don't. You say that nothing in life is black or white, but that's a lie, a very dangerous lie. Because either we prevent 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming or we don't. Either we choose to go on as a civilization or we don't. That is as black or white as it gets. Greta is clear. She is practical. I respect it. Greta says we must shift nearly every aspect of society urgently to attempt survival as a species on this planet but what is stopping us? As a minister that trusts and centers life, I ask what prevents reasonable and natural right action? This is the dilemma that we must resolve to address the core source of the environmental mess that colonization and really capitalism has whipped us into in just a matter of a couple centuries. We've been presented a cultural framework with binaries that failed. Like Breda says, and male and female are blood snippets of truth from a historical and scientific evidence that there is much more and is ever shaping and shifting. Day and night are short changes of the reality that dawn and dusk also exist. Yet Greta says there are some black and white truths. She says either we choose to go on as a civilization or we don't. Well, today, I present to you my black and white truth. This duality is at the core of not just the human experience, but what I often call the carbon experience. The network of life we belong to and cycle through. Like bees part of a colony, our bodies are part of a larger organism, an organized system. Here it is. Either we center life or we're glitching. Here's the science behind it. The autonomic nervous system, invertebrates, is the part of the nervous system that controls and regulates the internal organs without any conscious recognition or effort by the organism. The autonomic nervous system comprises of two antagonistic sets of nerves, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. The parasympathetic nervous system is the baseline state of life. This is the state of rest, ease, when the immune system is active, when digestion is processed and healing happens. The sympathetic nervous system is the need-based mode for survival. You've probably heard of it as fight, flight, freeze, and collapse. And it's when most of the organism's energy is targeted to survive. I call it a lunge for life. And frankly, it makes me pontificate. The poetry of organisms that are pre-programmed for life preservation and protection, and how it could have gone so wrong. Well, unlike wild plants and animals, humans have an uncanny ability to disrupt the completion of the sympathetic nervous system. And basically, we glitch. We get stuck in the sympathetic system as trauma isn't allowed to process and return to the parasympathetic. That energy becomes traffic jammed in our bodies, throwing off our reasoning, our processing, our perspective, our physiological regulating abilities. In short, rest and survival 
are the two systems that construct and sustain life. And so either we are centering life or we're glitching. If we desire to sustain life, if we desire to save our chance at inhabiting this planet, to defend all human black bodies, indigenous bodies, people of color, disabled, queer, women, trans bodies, if we desire justice and equity in our social order, we must restore these two systems in our bodies and in our cultures. Because our culture glamorizes hustle and busy and avoids rest. We believe excess isn't enough and there isn't enough for everyone. We think that hoarding wealth and resources is just the name of the game instead of ecosystem sabotage. We glorify monocrops and the erasure of biodiversity and nutrient density with our manicured, inedible monocrop lawns, with our gender preference for males and patriarchy, or the race glorification with white supremacy, or a bias for abled bodies and culturally attractive bodies with ableism and body shaming and fat phobia, and again and again and again, I can name the social effects of our house on fire, of trauma unaddressed, of nervous systems glitching in survival mode. Today and onwards, let us be clear in curating pathways to healing repressed energy. Because what we are doing outside of our bodies, we are also complicit within them. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying hurt bodies hurt bodies. That the repressed grief, anger, fear, shame, emotions, that energy in our bodies, just like those of our ancestors, will shape a world of repression, grief, anger, fear, shame, leading to inflammation and festering. We fuel a pressure cooker that, as the laws of physics demand, will be released one of two ways. One, by relief valve with intentionality and regulated and sustaining life. Or two, by force, it will burst out. This pressure cooker of repression inside ourselves mirrors what we have turned our atmosphere into, stuffed with greenhouse gases, heating us all up. It is outside as it is maintained inside. Our house is on fire, y'all, and the source is us. The diagnosis is clear. Hurt bodies hurt bodies, and our relationship to life as homo sapiens still easily can skew towards self-sabotage. So we must build a lifestyle of healing, constantly bolstering our resilience and addressing emotions as they present themselves. This is our call. Leah Morris gave us the equation in their song titled Spring Thing, and in the chorus, Leah sings beautifully, wake up from your slumber, try to remember, a time when we all were together as one. A new day has come. Tell me you feel the sun. Wipe away teardrops. Springtime has come. I'm wide awake now. Let us explore this chorus to identify our pathways to healing. First, Leah implores us to wake up from our slumber, just like Greta urges and Emma's revolution sings. Our house is on fire, but how is the question. Well, each of these guided invitations that follow are experiences, and I'll break them down. Please make note in your body how you feel and what comes up. Make note what pings true in your bones and what your body asks for to continue healing. First, Leah invites us to try to remember a time when we all were together as one. Y'all, I want to start with the basis that the earth is not exotic, it's not foreign, the earth isn't even really outside or other from ourselves, it isn't a gift to us or something we must rile up abstract empathy for as a separate object. We are the black earth itself. This is the roots of my community ministry for and by black millennials and Gen Zers to describe and support an ecosystem of spiritual wellness and to center life. Though we are not only our bodies, our bodies unite us with all carbon in a shared experience of returning to healing and wholeness with other human bodies, animal bodies, plants and soil bodies. And if at the core of your cosmology, you lack clarity of our oneness in a real and tangible way, 
let me read you this excerpt from a book I've recently read. Once upon a time, there was a universe. We're not sure about how it started or whether there is a reason, but we are pretty sure that during the first sliver of a trillionth of a second, it expanded very rapidly, so that for the most part, it looked the same in every direction and looked the same from every position. It was sameness everywhere, except that particles started to blip out of nothing due to random fluctuations caused by quantum effects. Maybe in space-time, we're still not sure about that. Then again, we're not super sure about this either, but for some reason, those particles formed more matter than antimatter. That process started to form structures, and from those structures, stars formed. Then the stars got old, some of them died in super epic, rather fabulous fashion, and they exploded into supernova, making heavy elements like carbon and oxygen in the process. Those elements went on to be the basis for all life on Earth. Neil deGrasse Tyson quite beautifully says, we are stardust brought to life by the universe so that the universe can figure itself out. Try and remember a time when we all were together as one and do this often, my loves. Leah goes on, a new day has come. Octavia Butler has rooted the ultimate truth of change throughout her Parable of the Sower series, where protagonist Lauren Oyam Olamina observes and explains a theology resilient and relevant in a chaotic and tragedy-filled society. Let's meditate on it. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. When you feel stiff-necked, when your mind is narrowed and limited in possibilities, when you are stuck in survival and need to disrupt the pattern of pain, remember, the lasting truth is change. We consciously and unconsciously shape change and change consciously and unconsciously shapes us. Whether for the better or worse, change is promised in the forecast. A new day comes. So now, what can we do with it? When Leah sings, tell me you feel the sun, I hear them asking us to remember in the midst of change, in our bodies, the shared blessing of pleasure. That ease and rest, the liminal space where we heal and restore our souls. So let me tell you a memory I revisit often to tap my body into ease and the parasympathetic. A few years ago, I visited friends in Trinidad, and one day we were hiking and searching out waterfalls in a lush, dense, and vibrant forest. I left my shoes in the car, and walking barefoot in a jungle brought me more present, humble. We climbed over trees and crawled under branches. We walked alongside and in the river, sometimes laughing, sometimes silent. When we got to the waterfall, I gazed at the top hundreds of feet above us. I swam out and sat under the falls and hundreds of gallons of water shook my body and cleared my mind. I slipped back into the pool crafted by nature, filled with the crashing water, and followed my body's instinct to float on my back. In moments that felt like forever, with my ears under the water, I could hear the waterfall churning, my heart beating, engulfed in life, vibrant and pounding, and I felt ecstatically connected. My eyes looked up at the tree canopy with slivers of sunlight dancing through. I felt in that moment, I was in a familiar dream. I was not my body. I couldn't feel where I ended and the water, the wind, the sky, the trees began. It was connection, peace, and fullness. So much I didn't notice warm salt water leave my eyes and join the overflow all around me. Beloveds, to one another and most importantly to your body, tell them when and how you feel the sun. Revisit it, draw from this embodied well that needn't run dry. Next, Leah reminds us to wipe away teardrops. 
I hear in the harmony and lyrics the imperative to process our trauma. I'm not asking if you've exposed your nervous system to tragedy porn regularly, or if you slump under the weight of exis existential terror and anxiety with your friends. I'm not asking us to attempt centering life via shame or fear. When I ask, have you wiped your tears? I'm asking, have you explored self-sabotage trauma responses in you? It may very well be overwhelm or shame or terror. Have you sat with love and curiosity for your frenzy? Have you listened to the anxiety behind your desperation to flee? Have you ritualized and strengthened with practice your tolerance and skills for managing discomfort, even though you've learned to deny and avoid conflict like a pro? Have you sat with your anger until it revealed fear or sadness? Then, have you stayed as your body, your carbon-made, life-pre-programmed body, witnessed as it processed the obstacles to wholeness and digested stuck and festering emotions? Have you gathered the wisdom from your bones and made an altar for them? Have you been with the pain human society has feared facing for centuries and survived, returning with the sureness that life returns to life? Wo ya ya. Have you wiped teardrops, beloved? If not, make haste in building a lifestyle of healing so you can install a pressure valve in your body, not only for this accumulated and the upcoming traumas that you will experience in your life, but also for all that is stored and eager for release from your ancestors who forgot or were obstructed from the way to healing. This is our teleological imperative, first to flourish and second to heal any obstacle to flourishing. Finally, Leah sings, springtime has come, I'm wide awake now. In short, rinse and repeat. This is a lifestyle of remembering and returning, of processing and acknowledging it is the motion from rest to survival and back again that we access the fullness of our life force energy. We are awake and able to put out the fire. So remember our oneness and the inevitability of change. Soak your body regularly in organic and earnest pleasure and rest. Make spiritual the lifestyle of healing. Then Repeat, beloveds, each one of us has the power to shape change and widen the pathways for healing for all life. May you remember you are beloved and go forth and be love. May it be so.
my soul. The sun is shining in my blood, the rolling sea. In my breath, the air of mountains. In my body, Mother 